So, Film Cow. If you don't know that name, let me just ask you a couple questions. Do you remember the animated series Charlie the Unicorn or Llamas with Hats? If you do, then you've definitely heard of Film Cow. I mean, they, they made the series, so I, I don't know if you've connected the dots yet. I remember on a random day around 2014, I stumbled upon Llamas with Hats and started watching them over and over and over again. I probably shouldn't have been watching it since I was still in elementary school, but I loved it and I still do. Someone reminded me about Film Cow again and I, I just had to start making a video on them. Film Cow has been around YouTube for a long time, by the way, starting their channel on February 22nd, 2006. I, I wasn't even born yet. So consider me a youngin, but I still remember watching their silly shit. I like to describe Film Cow as something random you dream about one night, then you wake up and try to remember what the fuck you just saw. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I, I don't think there's any other animation channel like it. So why don't we talk about the Film Cow channel and how just great it is? <laughs> I guess the first question we should probably ask is what is Film Cow? <laughs> Film Cow is mainly run by one guy called Jason Steele, and this guy is a god. Alright, he animates for the channel, does voice lines, writes the songs, like he, he does almost everything. Another pretty important role in the whole Film Cow thing is someone named Scuffy, another god. Speaking of Jason Steele, he's even made his own little film called Nick the Feature Film. Wait a second, that's my name! I actually remember watching this and I'm not, I'm not even kidding, I think I was like 7 whenever I watched it. I love how the plot is when someone becomes becomes obsessed with someone's simple life, so they just decided to document it. Like, imagine if you met someone, and they were so simple, you started recording them everywhere they went. That That's kind of like this. Now, I don't want to talk about that film too much, that could be its own video to be honest, but just know it's very epic. Film Cow is basically an animation channel that makes silly animations. I feel like everyone has at least heard of something made by Film Cow, especially Llamas with Hats, that one, that one's my favorite. Can I just say how fucking good the Charlie the Unicorn finale was? It might have been random as shit, it also might have felt like I was high while watching it, but you can just tell the time and effort that went into that work of art. In the meantime, let's talk about Jason Steele a little bit more, aka the main man. His work is so fucking cool, dude. I know he'll never probably see this, and I know he'll probably never even hear the name Nokelda, but dude, your work is fucking great. I think one of my favorite things about the Film Cow channel is how it doesn't care to be random and funny. When I say random, I mean random, and not in a bad way. They've thought of the most random animations, but they make it make sense to be honest. Like here, let me give you an example. <coughs> Charlie the Unicorn looks like a normal cartoon, right? Well, he eventually gets met by an underwater goat, something called a frogus, a starfish that is in love with him, oh, and he becomes like a god of the universe and saves humanity. I know, that probably sounds really weird, which it is, but it, it's amazing. If I were to try and explain any animation by Film Cow, it could be analyzed for hours, but I don't have that much time, alright? I still have chemistry homework to do, which I haven't done. I should probably do that right now. I think Film Cow's videos were honestly some of the first more population animations on YouTube. Again, they've been on the platform for a hot minute. Some of their animations like Llamas with Hats, it's so simple yet so filling. You can tell as the series goes on that they've gotten better at animation. You can tell Jason still really cares about his work. Okay, I'm sorry for dick riding again, but come on, you gotta give credit to the man. Anyways, I feel like we can't talk about Film Cam without mentioning those old animations we all love. So let's start with Charlie the Unicorn, which we've already talked about a little. Now, Charlie the Unicorn is one of the most interesting animations I've ever seen, and honestly, I think the most interesting anyone's ever seen. If you don't understand the story, don't worry. I don't even understand the whole story myself. I'm gonna try my best to explain the series from start to finish, okay? You ready? So there's two unicorns that are named... Wait, what, what are their names? Two unicorns named Laws and Raffle forced Charlie to go with them to Candy Mountain. Yeah, long story short, uh, Candy Mountain really isn't all that, and by the end of it, they steal Charlie's kidney. They also go across a supposed magical bridge. That, that's cool, I guess. In the second episode, Laws and Raffle forced Charlie again, but this time, they have to deliver a special something to the supposed Banana King. Along the way, they pass the letter Z. Yes, just the fucking letter Z. See, I, I told you this shit was random. Whenever they arrive at the Banana Kingdom, something called a Faragus sings Charlie a song. Surely nothing could go wrong, right? Wrong! Whenever Charlie gets home, it turns out he's been robbed. My theory is that the two unicorns are just giving Charlie the hardest weed and he passes out and they steal from him. They, they don't even like him, they try to kill him later on. In episode 3, Laws and Raffle once again come to annoy Charlie. This time they think the aliens are invading. They go underwater, to, don't ask me how, and eventually meet with Capricorn, which is the name of the underwater goat. Another song commences and Charlie wakes up in the middle of the Alps with his horn taken off and put onto a snowman. 
Man. You would think Charlie stops hanging out with these fuckers, but no, he, he just keeps hanging out with them. In Charlie the Unicorn 4, they go to the fucking moon and they're met by a magical centipede and another song commences. Eventually, the two unicorns ask Charlie to stay inside of this cave-like thing. Well, uh, there's a bomb in there and they try to kill him. You remember that starfish that was in love with him from earlier? Yeah, his ass comes back and saves Charlie. T what a guy. Okay, did you get all that? Good, because we got plenty more to talk about. In the Charlie the Unicorn finale, it kind of takes a turn in a different direction. A smart direction, to be fair. I'll try to sum it up very quickly. There's this tower. This tower guards this very powerful creature that can transcend time and space. It tries to take over the world and space, which it eventually does. And this one scientist called Nix NYX... Yeah, fuck it, I'm, I'm just gonna call him Nyx. So Nyx wants to study this supposed being. It gets out, and Nyx tries to tell the world about the danger that they are about to be in. But the being was one step ahead of him, killing everyone in his path, and eventually killing him as well. Even as a ghost, though, he still tries to save humanity, and that's where Charlie comes in. Yeah, it took me a bit to realize what was going on. So Laws and Raffle, right? This entire time, we're just multiples of the being just acting as unicorns. The starfish that is in love with Charlie gives him all sorts of powers so he can save the world, which she eventually does and there's some weird time travel shit that happens but but the main thing charlie saves the universe that's the end oh my god i know i know it's very confusing like i said this series alone could be its own video to sum up charlie the unicorn the entire time charlie was the man to fix it all even though he was just a grumpy bitch i suggest you all go watch this to really understand it, it's cool as fuck just you know you got to get through the randomness of it all but in the end it all comes together and makes sense there's of course a lot more questions that i have but i, I don't have the time to ask them if this series was made into a book, it'd probably be as long as the fucking Bible. Enough of Charlie the Unicorn though, now we have another series to talk about and I'm guessing you guys already know which one we're gonna be talking about. Llamas with hats. It's llamas. With hats. Laugh. I know I've already said it, but this was my favorite series by Film Cal. Hell, I still find myself laughing at it. The humor is so fucked up, but go God, it's so funny. Someone wanting to gnaw on some baby hands? Now that's comedy. There's 12 episodes in this series, and all of them are short, but still, I'm not gonna go over each and every one of them because, you know, I, I don't want to, but I'll give a general synopsis. So there's two llamas, one named Paul and the other one named Carl. Now Carl is the fucked up one. He's the one that enjoys eating, well, baby hands. And Paul is just trying to live his normal life. The first half of the series, Carl does something new that's fucked up every episode, and of course, Paul is freaked out. But to be honest, Carl is a great friend, you know, he causes a nuclear fallout for his friend Paul. Then he hung face flesh onto balloons for a surprise. See, now that... That's a friend I want. Around episode 6, Paul leaves Carl, and Carl kinda goes crazy, making a mask to remember him by, and eventually the mask turns evil, telling him to do all these crazy acts. Carl even has his own gore pit. What the fuck? I mean, he, he's like modern Satan. Eventually, he goes to visit Paul after everything he's done, and to no surprise, he's fucking dead. <laughs> nice, Carl. So then eventually, Carl kills himself. Uh, yay. What a... What a great ending. I'm gonna be honest, it was kinda sad when Carl killed himself, okay? Sorry that I have remorse. I'm pretty sure Carl was a psychopath that was left unsupervised, at least that makes sense to me. I love this series, it's great, it truly is, but instead of talking about psychopathic llamas, let's talk about the burning question that we're all wondering. What does Film Cow do as of recently? Well, to be honest, nothing has really changed, and I kind of love that. They still make silly cartoons as they did a decade and a half ago. They even have a Patreon that you guys might just have to go subscribe to. One of their new series that I enjoy a lot is Spatch the madness. Now that, that is peak Film Cow. Overall, Film Cow has made some great animations that a lot of us grew up on. Even still, they make amazing animations that others, just like us back in the day, are growing up on. Again, they are pretty revolutionary. They did something else no one really had the balls to do, and that's what I respect about Film Cow. Now, if you'll excuse me, just like the ending to all these videos, I'm gonna go and try to make my own animation. Hey sir, can I, uh, get a beer? Well, I don't mean to alarm you, but, uh, you know this is a cafe, right? Not a bar? <coughs> so how's Jenny doing? Is she doing good? Oh yeah, she's doing pretty good. Wait a second, how do you know my wife's name? All right, gotta go. I really want to watch porn right now. Me too. Wait, who said that? I did. I really want to watch porn too. Goodbye.
What the fuck was that?